Hello, my name is Magnus from Etage 9 and this is Fredrik from Etage 9 and we are going to talk about our very first album, War on the Motions. Uh, the band uh, started in, well, 1987 when we all got uh, three synths. Uh, there were three of us back then. Rickard was also a member. And um, uh, about one year later we released our first album, War in the Motions. We're sitting in my uh, old bedroom at my mother's house and uh, uh, this is pretty much where the album started. I wrote uh, Broken Shadows here, uh, also wrote uh, Springtime and The Change and uh, some other songs that didn't make the cut for some reason when we made the album. Uh, but the first songs uh, I wrote here, I, I, we started off in 86 and I bought my synth. I think December 86, uh, a Casio C set 5000. Uh, and I brought it here and I started doing uh, some amazing instrumental tracks called Bloop. And uh, Staffan. And, uh, and then we bought a PA and we bought, uh, you bought your keyboards. Uh, I had a Juno one and uh, there were f uh, th three of us uh, back then, uh, Rickard, uh, he had a Juno 106 mm. and uh, I think it was in March 1987 that we all uh, had uh, one synthesizer each and that is what we count as the, as the, start. the, the start of the band in March, March 1987. So yeah. then uh, we started writing real songs with, uh, uh, with a verse and a chorus and uh, vocals. And I did it here with the PH and my, my neighbor, uh, a wonderful lady called Sonia, who lived, had a uh, bedroom uh, behind this wall. She started to uh, pounding in the wall every night uh, when I sat here and made the, made the songs. So uh, she knocked on the door one day and said that uh, she belonged to a, a sort of community and they had uh, a studio down in the harbor uh, in Ystad, they called uh, NBV. And uh, she gave me the key and she, sh she said, you can go there, go nuts, most of all, go now. <laughs> and uh, <laughs> so we went down, we, we took a gear, went down to NBV and started recording uh, the album there. And that was uh, great for us, getting full access to a studio. And there were some other friends of ours there as well. Uh, the Face, uh, another synth band from Ystad. And uh, we used to, well, of course, we made a lot of music, but we also uh, just hang out there and uh, had a lot of coffees. And, Watched Smoked a lot of cigarettes. Uh, watched Knight Rider on television and just uh, hang out there. Holy Protect uh, has always been for me like the theme song of uh, War and Emotions. Uh, it's about war and emotions. <laughs> so that's it. <laughs> Uh, the song is uh, a mix, actually. I was inspired by, uh, music-wise, by uh, Told You So, by uh, Depeche Mode. And uh, lyric-wise, uh, I uh, by uh, Phil Linnett and Gary Moore, and they're out in the fields. And if, if you combine those songs, you get uh, Holy Protect. And, and I think uh, I made it because uh, the other group, uh, The Face, had, uh, had bought themselves an Emacs. Uh, synthesized and sampler and there were really cool sounds on that Emacs so I think I was just playing around with them uh, for stars and that uh, became a whole protect in the end and it's uh, still my, one of my favorite live tracks and it's uh, one of my favorite songs playing it live because it's so uh, yeah it's a, it's, it's a great feeling playing it live we always get kind of a bit uh, nostalgic I think and, uh, and especially uh, Especially the second half of the song is always uh, you just go nuts when you play 
and I play the solo and there's a lot of there's a quite a long solo that is good fun to play. So yeah, a and good song. No, normally the crowd also goes nuts when we play it. So, yeah, good song. Black Wishes um, is about actually is about a friend of ours uh, whose parents didn't really like uh, what he was wearing when he was wearing black, and we had chains and mascara and uh, stuff, and they, they weren't too happy about that. guy came up to us in uh, Stockholm when we were there at the party and, and told us that the song helped him through what it was like high school, you can say. Because uh, he also was dressed in black and Sinta, uh, as we call it in Swedish. And um, he, uh, they were, he was uh, bullied and uh, his parents didn't like him either. So uh, he thanks us, he thanked us for the song actually. And that was only three years ago. Yeah, three years ago. Happened. So that was a lot later. Yeah. Yeah. Yes, and um, there is a small detail in the song, which, uh, well, not very much, but uh, f for us back then it was quite uh, like rebellic. We yeah. put in a bit of an electric guitar, which uh, was kind of forbidden for <laughs> Big no -no. synthesizer bands uh, back then at the 80s. Uh, so there, there is a, a short riff uh, by an electric guitar and this is also so far the only song that has been played on Swedish national radio yeah. from our songs that is. Um, so um, yeah, it, it was an interview, you were interviewed and uh, then they played this song and we, yeah, you were asked questions about mm -hmm. The lyrics and so on. And never, be, never been played again. No, that was the first and only time. Yes. Uh, wave work. I, th I think um, the song uh, came to. I, 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 the, when we got down on, on uh, NBV. There were all this gear, we didn't know uh, how it worked, so you had to figure everything out. And while doing that, you, you found little things. So uh, at Way of Work, I, thought, I think I, f I found uh, the drum machine through uh, a delay, and you got this triple uh, dun -dun 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 -dun. And I thought, that's cool. And then I made a song, <laughs> pretty much from that. And then you had to uh, sing something. That, the, the words, I don't really know. Uh, I think I was uh, inspired by uh, 1984 uh, or something. And I know uh, that uh, Magnus here, he, he always he hated that song. He don't like that song. No, he doesn't like that song at all. Uh, I think we might play it live sometime. Misplaced Childhood, uh, I wrote it uh, the summer of 1986, that was actually yeah before we have got to know each other. Um, I remember that I wrote the lyrics when I was uh, some, I had this summer job where I was uh, cleaning, uh, cleaning schools and um, it's about uh, boy soldiers in Africa. That was also something that you could see very, very often on the Swedish television back then. So it's about um, it's about uh, yeah, boy soldiers in Africa and uh, that they didn't get any any normal childhood and so. And um, what else? About this well, there was one thing that we thought were really, really cool, and uh, that was that uh, we did. Um, you, you say we need your son, 
and we put it through some uh, reverb or something, and so it sounds like we need your sound. <sighs> and yes. I, know, I, I remember we were really, really proud of that. Yeah. That was our coolest moment ever. And the thing is, when we played it live, I, I, I kind of shouted, yeah. "We need your son!" <laughs> something like that. No one heard. <laughs> we just said. <laughs> Told is a song. Um, we also we listen a lot to uh, uh, harder bands like uh, Nitzreb and the Front 242, and I wanted to do something that was a little bit cooler than uh, like Broken Shadows or No Understanding and uh, songs like that. Uh, so it's ju pretty much just the bass and drums and uh, cool effects. And uh, we play the song live um, in uh, Stadt Hamburg, uh, uh, a club in Malmo. Uh, 1987 and for some reason I don't know why we wanted to play this song because it wasn't finished I, I hadn't written the I think it was a second verse or something so I sat down in the in the dressing room backstage uh, writing the lyrics with a pencil on a piece of paper and I, I remember I put the paper uh, by the monitors on stage and I put two uh, beers to hold it down and the, one of the first things I did coming up on stage was I knocked over the beers, over the paper, and it all just blur. Uh, so I, uh, I had to uh, ad-lib the lyrics <laughs> in English, quite drunk. Uh, and my, I know my English teacher, she would kill me if she heard it. It was just awful. And of course we have it on tape. Of course. <laughs> Broken Shadows was uh, the first song uh, we recorded at uh, NBV. As I said, I wrote it in my in uh, my old bedroom, and when we came down to NBV, we had a friend there called uh, Benjamin, uh, who was a member of the another synth band, uh, who also uh, were in the studio, and uh, he knew the studio. We didn't know the studio. We never recorded anything uh, anywhere, uh, so he had to show us all the gear. And uh, the easiest way to do that was showing us while we were recording a song. And that song was uh, Broken Shadows. I remember I wrote the song coming home after clubbing one night and it's pretty much the way it sounds uh, with, uh, with the harmonies and the lyrics. I know we, we, we wrote, a, wrote a bridge at MBV and uh, for some reason the only place we play that uh, bridge twice is on the, the studio version. Live we only play it once. I really don't know why. Uh, it's just one of those things. We should have Radioactive Rain is a song that is uh, pretty much four sounds uh, altogether. There are drums, and there are a bass line from the Juno uh, 106, there are uh, a Peggio from the uh, 106, and there is a swooshing sound. I think that's how I started the song, uh, by discovering that swooshing sound through a uh, reverb, I think. Radioactive Rain is about the uh... Chernobyl disaster in, in April 1986 and then in April 1986 we were 16 years old and this song is written less than two years later and we were in the middle of it. We, uh, this was real for us, it was a real threat and the winds actually took that radioactive rain and it was falling right over Sweden. We were quite okay down here in the south, but in the mid 
made uh, Sweden like the animals in the forest died and uh, there were, was a high rate of the cancer in the years to come. And it is actually about something that really happened and when it did happen, nobody knew how it was going to go. So uh, yeah, pretty scary uh, occasion. Champagne is a song uh, that uh, from the beginning were called lullaby because uh, it sounded like a lullaby it was much uh, slower in the beginning. a new version at uh, MBV with the drums and uh, speed up the tempo a little bit and it, it is about uh, nuclear war and the Cold War. Yes and that was something that we were grown up with living li living under the threat of the nuclear bombs and everything and uh, the Cold War between the West and the East and uh, of course we live in it we were um, raised in Ystad, which is in the very, very south of Sweden, so right across the water was uh, Poland and, uh, and East Germany, so it was very close to us. And the whole thing with the Cold War was something like, I guess, like the climate crisis for today's youngsters and kids, that uh, it was a real big threat and uh, I think it affected us uh, quite a lot and well this song is a bit about that and it is, it, it is actually one of my favorite songs um, of the ones we've done. I, I really really like the song and, and the lyrics that uh, yeah. Unjustified Grief is, um, well, actually the name Unjustified Grief, I don't think it will have had anything to do with the song. Uh, Richard, the third member back then, uh, had an idea of, uh, of uh, coming up with the titles uh, on the songs. Uh, so we took one song and we took the title and, yeah, that's a match. Uh, Broken Shadows, the same thing. Uh, one title, one song, okay. And that is the typical uh, NBV song. You came down in the studio, you found a cool sound, and you made a song out of it, and then you wrote some lyrics, and then the song is finished. Pretty much you went home, and the next day, a new song. And the only th the really special about uh, uh, Unjustified Grief is uh, that's when you learned that you don't put your hand on the key keyboard while the technician is uh, pulling, sl pulling um, the first contacts. The first time we played at the Ystad Theatre um, here in Ystad in, in May 1988, my sound suddenly disappeared. My synthesizer got, uh, well, cut off or something, so I, I couldn't uh, hear uh, my sound and I uh, kind of waved over to, to the sound guy and uh, pointed to my synth and did like this and uh, like that and suddenly right in the very beginning of Unjustified Grief the sound came back really 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 <laughs> loud so there's a big bang right in the very intro and you are kind of turning around so <laughs> what? <laughs> yeah that's Unjustified Grief. Something in your mind. Uh, I wrote it on my electric, um, my electric organ that I had at home. Do, 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 do. And it's about, um, well, it's about me uh, falling in love with a girl and 
thinking that um, hmm, if I become friends with her, maybe she can start to. Well, maybe she falls in love with me. Uh, but uh, nah. Big mistake. Big mistake. Uh, we became very close friends, and of course, uh, that friendship was worth more than anything else she thought. And uh, well, I'm happy because, uh, well, she's a very good friend of mine, and uh, yeah, no names mentioned. She knows it. <laughs> she knows it. No understanding is about um, me being uh, tired, uh, tired at school, uh, from school. Uh, I wrote it quite early, at, I was 15 years old, so it was before you and I got to know each other. And um, yeah, it's, it's pretty much uh, a uh, kid uh, who is uh, kind of fed up about school and uh, teachers uh, wimping on me and uh, want to was to get out from school and be free and everything. Uh, so it's a, it's a very very early song, one of my one of my first songs ever actually. I think we only, only played it once. No, actually, no, twice I think. But the the last time we played it was on a fashion show in uh, Hystad at the Star Shiny Club here in town. And uh, the, the song before you were in front of the stage singing. Uh, something in something your mind. In your mind. Yes. And it was a really, a really small stage and we had to pass each other. And when you uh, went back to your synth, you uh, knocked it over pretty and much. Stumbled on something. Stumbled on something. And, uh, and everything fell over. Yeah, so you can hear it because we all also get that record. You can hear it like Of course, yeah. it's okay. Never play it again. So that's pretty much the story of uh, Worn Emotions. Uh, it was released, I think, March uh, 1988 on cassette. Uh, Rick had made the cover on your brother, uh, copied the tapes, and then we sold them uh, at the schoolyard. Schoolyard on the Österport Yes. And you even had a book. Uh, yeah. Where we wrote the names of the people who, who uh, bought it and if they had paid. <laughs> yes. I think we got it still actually. And I, yeah, I, I have to say thank you to my brother who had this double cassette where you could copy uh, cassettes. And he, he actually copied all the cassettes yeah. that we made. And uh, now. But I, I also know that he, he, <laughs> he copied one side and then he shifted the tapes without uh, playing it back. So the, the, the rewinding it yeah, back. The B side starts yeah. a little bit in. On yes, the yes, of course, yes. <laughs> and that's the reason, if anyone has been <laughs> yeah. wondering that before. Yeah, uh, well, uh, now it feels good that uh, we're finally gonna get one emotions released on vinyl. It only took 33 years. Yeah, was, yeah. so that's about time. So, um, well. That's pretty much the story of warm emotions. Enjoy. Thank you. <laughs>